we have a brand new ROG Ally. And yes, your complaints made this happen. Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to Board at Work. Now, if you join us for the very first time, hit that subscribe button notification icon so you can watch more videos like this about us gamers complaining and getting what we want. I'm joking. Anyway, so this is the ROG Ally X and it's the brand new ROG Ally from Asus. Now, a lot of gamers talked about some of the features they wanted and Asus actually took note of this. Talked about better battery life, talked about the uh, D-pad changes, all these different things. And the Ally X is here to show that. Now, it looks like an Ally except black, so it kind of reminds me of the MSI Claw, but this device still has the same DNA with a lot of great features. Call it a 1.5, not a 2.0, but one with a lot packed in. So on the surface, hardware, taking a look at what we see here, uh, display still seven inches, 120 Hertz, uh, refresh rate, 500 nits, brightness, and we have Dolby Vision. I'm not sure if we had Dolby Vision in the first one, but uh, that's a nice addition if it is. Someone will correct me in the comments, I know. But when we move from the display, you start seeing a lot of changes around the device. Uh, the hardware itself, when you're holding it, has better grips, uh, much better than the original Ally, so it feels more comfortable holding in your hands while you're gaming. And you can game for long sessions. I played some Power Worlds, and you're gonna see a lot of that in there. Now, you guys are probably gonna ask me about other games. We only got to play one game, so you're gonna be seeing Power Worlds a lot in this video. Now, besides the grips, the, uh, the back customizable button, the M buttons, are a bit smaller and better spaced which means that no more accidental presses, you know, for those functionalities you've mapped into it, that kind of stuff has kind of gone away, right? Now, the hardware has some other changes all around. Your top row where your volume button is, your power button has some rearrangements to it. So you do have two USB ports now. One is USB 4.0 and one is USB 3.2, 4.0 up to 40 gigabits. So you can connect it to an external um, GPU, no longer having that proprietary ASUS port, which a lot of us didn't like, and we thought it was just kind of taking space. Now, the only downside I see with those two USB ports next to each other is that if you have a USB port that has a wider tip or a wider encasement, it'd be harder for you to have two USB ports you know, connected to each other. So that's just something to take note. Now, ASUS talked about the fact that they put a lot of thought into making this feel like a very different device, but also keeping the same DNA. One thing that I noticed that he talked about that looks very simple and you might not catch is just the, the degree of spacing between the analog sticks and the buttons themselves. Now, it was much easier to just swiftly go from an analog stick to the button or from my D-pad to the analog stick by just simply just swiping my hands back and forth. It doesn't seem that important because you do it all the time, but honestly, it felt very comfortable. Slight degree changes there from ASUS, and I like that. The thumbsticks also felt really good, more rigid, felt much sturdier with it. I uh, felt like you, you would guess less stick drift in any form or fashion. So that's something we have to see. Now, when we move to the D-pad, this I wanted to test with Street Fighter, but we didn't have Street Fighter to play. The D-pad felt more comfortable and better for Shirukens and Hadoukens, right? At least that's how I see it. So that's something to take note. Uh, and I think hardware-wise, externally, feels good. Feels like an improvement on what they've done. When you dive deep into the device, Asus talked about how they changed the way the motherboard looked and how the whole internals were remapped to accommodate bigger and better battery, as also accommodate a couple of things in there. So you have a terabyte of storage and will fit a full size M2 SSD. So for everyone who wants to swap out the SSDs in there, you can and go to like four gigabytes or whatever you want to uh, in there. Uh, also comes with 24 gigs of RAM. I repeat, two, four, not two or four, but 24, which is amazing. And it's fast RAM, 7,500 megahertz, uh, DDR5 RAM. That is just impressive. Now this will help that Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor, which hasn't changed because you now have more RAM for of course the GPU and also for your games as well, game management. Uh, and should give us just better performance overall. So those are the kind of things they've done well. And again, a bigger battery. The battery is now 80 watt hours. So you double the battery size for longer, of course, gameplay periods. You're taking a longer flight, you don't have to charge, you know, within the flight, you can at least 
I believe technically you can get close enough to California from New York with this battery, especially playing the games you love to play. Now you're thinking that battery is gonna make it super heavy because it's double the size. Eh, not so much. The original Ally weighs 608 grams. This weighs 678 grams. So there's a little bit more weight, but it still feels very comfortable. Honestly, I enjoyed playing with it. I wanted to take it home with me. Isu said no, so I couldn't do that, but I can't wait to check it out and show you guys what it actually does, especially compared to the previous Ally, in terms of performance, in terms of the games you can play, and also how it handles in terms of just battery life and overall use. Does it feel better? Currently it does, but we have to wait and see. So if you guys have any questions and comments about the ASUS ROG Ally X, and also, do you guys want me to compare this to the brand new Steam Deck OLED? Leave your thoughts, I will do them for you. That's all I have to do here. Your bidding. Enjoy entertainment.